Hi, my name's Rich Harrington. And I'm Ian Robinson. And we're the co-authors of a book from Peach Pit Press called Motion Graphics with Creative Suite 5 Studio Techniques. It's part of the Adobe Press line. And in it, we explore lots of ways of using the Creative Suite together. One of my favorites is 3D. Yeah, especially with the power of the 3D render engine, you can get into Photoshop and actually create true three-dimensional objects. Yeah, or bring in 3D objects that were modeled in another application and then resurface them or add video layers. It's yeah. pretty cool. So I want to show you really quickly a couple things we look at the book, making some sort of abstract primitives. Yep. And uh, it's real simple. So what's black is going to push up, what's white is going to push down. We've got some flexibility. We could say, oh, you know, go ahead and make a new mesh from grayscale and uh, make this a cylinder. And it'll go through and it sort of pushed that. And if we take a look at our 3D tools here, you know, we could rotate that around and start to see the object. That's and pretty it, cool. Yeah. So this is a real 3D object that we could bring over to After Effects. Yeah. Now, you could, if you run this on a different type of object here, like where we have some blurriness to it, if we were going to go ahead and do that, you'll see now that it's going to not have those hard edges, but it's going to be a little bit more curved. And you'll see that instead of being sort of a hard pinwheel shape, it's now more of sort of a flower shape. Yeah driven by the curve. So obviously we got a lot of flexibility here. Yeah, it's definitely a slightly different way of modeling, but I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, and you could use, there's actually under the 3D tools here, you have the ability to actually wrap these to shapes. You can load up your own presets as shapes here, or you could you know, start to do things like spheres. In this case, it's gonna sort of create a notch on that, you know, driven by that object. So a lot of flexibility as we're working. You could, of course, bring in your own objects. So you can go out and find 3D objects, and you would just say that you want to make a new layer from a file. Yep. Or in this case, you know, we actually load it up, and we could put different textures onto this. Yeah. You know, you just go ahead and, you know, you got a book here in this case. Maybe we're doing a talk show. We could paint the different objects on there. You know, if I just double click and, you know, go into an actual texture, you know, I could open that up and it's going to go ahead and texture, you know, the different layers. So it's yeah. very, very simple. You know, let's just come over here to the front side. And if I wanted to put a different texture on the front, you know, there's the side texture, you know, roll over, you see them. There's the front texture. Yeah, it's really nice and slick how all those different layers are kind of integrated into that one master layer. But they're grouped in a way that visually makes sense, especially when you're trying to think of it as almost a... a an extension of layer styles, if you will, when you're applying a layer in Photoshop. And I recommend you switch over to Photoshop's 3D workspace yeah. where you can see much more control over the lights and the textures. There's lots of cool things here. Definitely. Of course, probably the best thing is when you get on over to After Effects, you can actually you know, double click and select one of those guys and you could choose to bring that in as an actual 3D layer. So if we go ahead here and select the book, and I say to import that, you know, as a composition, mm -hmm. it's going to go ahead and bring that in and you'll see that it's got live Photoshop 3D. Yeah. So there it is as an actual layer. The important thing here is you don't actually move the 3D object. No. No, bad. <laughs> <laughs> you use the controller layer and you can start to spin that object around, yep. you know, do it. Notice it has real depth. Mm -hmm. You can animate the camera. I mean, That's you right. use these all the time in your workflow. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And, you know, now that it's an After Effects, we can keyframe it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you could, you know, move the 3D camera in, sweep in, do all these great things. Yep. But there is a little trick. Like, these have lights already added to the model. But you right. say, well, what happens if I wanted to change that? Well, you kind of can. It's interesting is that, you know, here we have this ring that we brought across. And, you know, we said, well, we wanted that ring to start to, you know, react more to the actual uh, things that we're working with. Like, oh, we really wish that we can see. Highlights adjusting with the lights? Yes. Yeah, what a thought, <laughs> right? Novel idea, right? <laughs> Interactivity amongst different layers within After Effects. Yeah, so we, we got our light here, you know, and we start to adjust the intensity. And you, you see that really, you know, like, look, there's no light, yet there's still a highlight on the light. Yeah, it's weird how that works, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's because the model has its own 3D lights built in. So yeah. I recommend kind of lighting a little bit flat in Photoshop. Yep, yep. And then if you make this a 3D layer, it's going to go ahead and become a 3D layer. And so now, as you adjust lights here inside of After Effects, those are going to react in the model itself. Yep, yep. And, and you brought up a really cool thing. We got a new option here in our lights, right? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Light fall off. Light fall off is really, really a great thing because now, you know, in the past, when you set up a light inside of After Effects, what it would do, uh, that light would be on and it would just travel as far as you could see. Now, you get the appearance of fall off if you angled the light to the layer. But really, if you moved another object way far down in the scene, you would still have the same brightness intensity that you would have if that layer was right next to that light. Not very 3D. No, no, not very 3D at all. So with light fall off, you actually have two new options. Smooth and inverse square clamped, which sounds like a medical condition. That's right. That's you have right. much more of a 3D <laughs> background than I do. So smooth is going to be the default choice for most people, right? A little yeah. more gradual. Yeah. The easiest way to think of smooth is think of it in a linear fashion. It's a linear control. So really, when you have smooth, you have an adjustment for your radius and your fall off distance. So the easiest way to think about this, the radius is the size of the light and then the fall off distance is how far that light actually travels from the edge of the size you set from that radius. So as we're adjusting the fall off distance there, it's sort of a finer level of control than say intensity because you could just have it more gradual as it transitions. Yes. Uh, but then we also do have the inverse square clamped. Yes, which honestly, you could just quantify this by saying real. <laughs> okay. So this is this is trying to be a little bit more photorealistic. Yeah. Obviously a little more intensive there, but we're getting some really nice highlights there. And as we adjust sort of the fall off here, uh, we've got the radius there. The fall off distance sort of falls off. It's just the fall off distance is going to be dictated by the relationship from the light to the background layer, right? Yes, yes, most definitely. So and again, you know, I quantified it by saying real. But as we all know, light actually does travel in a very quantifiable fashion. And inverse square clamped is literally just the, the long terminology to uh, define the um, algorithm that mathematically it's happens. It's real, sort of that's like right. how Gaussian means natural. <laughs> So. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. So enough technical speak. <laughs> now, one of the other things that's new, and, and this is, you know, actually simplifies things quite a bit. We had 3D channel support before if you wanted to create true 3D graphics, but now it's gotten a bit easier. So if, if you set up a complex composition and, and, and you've got some objects moving and, you know, you say, oh, well, I, you know, let's go ahead and sort of animate that camera. You know, we'll go ahead here and we'll go with position and point of interest here. We'll just sort of rock that over on the position side. So it's sort of moving through the scene. Yeah, look at that move. Okay. Real simple, mm -hmm. you know, but it's fine. And, uh, you know, we'll just tilt that down just a little bit with the position there. So we're good. Yeah. Um, you know, we're doing what we needed to. Well, the cool thing here is that we actually now have the ability to turn this into a true 3D object. And uh, it'll render this out with two channels. So this is 3D, but of course, by default, this is sort of flat. Right. But, you know, as broadcast networks are looking more and more at 3D uh, delivery to consumers yep. or feature films, uh, you might create a full-blown camera move. And you say, well, you know what? I really wanted to turn this into an actual 3D two-channel graphic. Yeah. I mean, if you have a 3D television, what's better than actually creating something that you can actually see in 3D on your own machine? Yeah, so we'll go ahead here with the camera selected. We'll choose that we want to go ahead under layer, camera, create stereo 3D rig. And at this point, your machine sort of goes into autopilot. You're like, what just happened? Well, it did two things here. It actually, if you go back, you can look at the original project and you'll see that there's our first film strip. And oh, yep. okay. This it's is where got, we were. This is where we were. We right. got our original camera up top here. Then we've got our left and our right camera. So if we were to turn these off, there's the right camera eye, there's the left eye, and yep. you see they're sort of shifted. If we actually look at this and we take a look at the actual camera rig here, let's sort of zoom in here. You could see this. There's the camera. Yep. Notice what do we have there? Left and right. Two cameras yep. side by side, just like a real 3D production rig. Yeah, what a thought. Yeah. Right? So After Effects just says, oh, well, go ahead, take those two cameras, yep. like it was the human eye, put them right next to each other, set that up, and now you say, well, how do I render that out? Well, it did all that work for you. Yep. There's the left view. Yep. Here's the right view. And then here's the complex view. So if you had the red blue glasses here, you could see this right on your computer screen without yep. a special monitor. Yeah, yeah. Or if you were to, I don't know, 
borrow some glasses from someplace. <laughs> uh, if you look up here at the effects controls, you actually see that you've got the ability of saying, well, how does this display? Right now, we could do the side-by-side -side stereo view, uh, the two images, and yep. then this would go out to a special 3D display. Yep. Um, if you have an HDMI port on your computer or yep. a display port to HDMI adapter like we're using here, you could run this right out to a 3D TV set. Yeah, 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 most definitely. And you know, you get the nice finite control that you can actually apply based on the specific hardware that you're using. Yeah, so if you didn't have that, you could do the red green glasses, like yep. the ones we had when we were kids. Old or, school. Or red blue, you know, you can get these online still or, or find yeah. it, you know, from your child. Uh, but pretty simple, or the balanced color red blue, and you sort of get the preview. Yep. But the idea here is that there's lots of ways to generate true 3D Yep. You could render this out as a left-right channel, deliver it to the editor, or you could render it out as a special 3D effect, upload it. Even YouTube supports 3D movies. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, though. Yeah. So, great thing. So much easier. We always had great 3D tools here in After Effects. You now see that Photoshop comes in, and if you want to make true 3D output, you could do that, too. Yeah, and it's just literally click of a button. And, and in the book, we actually explore even Illustrator has some cool 3D tools for drawing. Yeah, yeah, most most definitely. Don't disrespect the rest of the creative suite because they're all really nicely tied together. And especially when you start taking all those elements and building them, you'll end up with something that, uh, you know, is pretty, pretty ridiculous. Yeah. So be sure to check out the book. That's Motion Graphics with Adobe Creative Suite 5 Studio Techniques from Peach Pit Press. My name's Rich Harrington. And I'm Ian Robinson. And if you haven't tried it yet, download the free 30-day demo to After Effects Creative Suite CS5.5. Yeah. And check out the production premium or the master collection bundle. That's going to give you access to all these great tools.